Vaccines are expanding to nearly everyone. Local counties are moving into less restrictive tiers. So much good news coming out lately about the COVID-19 crisis. But before we put all this behind us, we have to deal with the damage that has already been done. I still have extreme fatigue, high heart rate. I wake up gasping for air when I'm asleep. Just one example for many people who have had COVID-19, the lingering effects haven't gone away even long after they test negative for the virus. The emotional burdens can be as great as the physical ones. And the economic impact of the pandemic will be hanging over all of us for a long time. But a new stimulus package aims to help those who are suffering in a number of different ways. We take a look and the changes in the way people live and work are having a huge effect on the housing market. Our work-life balance has shifted where it's more about the home, you know, it's made it more of a priority. Should you buy, sell, move? And if so, where should you go? We examine the current real estate roller coaster as Fox 11 News In-Depth starts right now. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for being with us. I'm Marla Tejas. I'm here for Hal Eisner, who continues to recover, along with our videographer, Joab Perez, after being hit by a suspected drunk driver that was more than two weeks ago. We will have an update on their condition in a little bit. But first, we begin with the hidden toll of COVID-19. Many people who have recovered from the virus and test negative for it are still suffering from symptoms many months later. Those so-called long haul suffer from everything from shortness of breath to neurological symptoms, hair loss, depression, and anxiety. Diana Barrent is the creator of a Survivor Core. That's the name of this grassroots movement to help the long haulers help each other. So we welcome Diana to this Fox 11 News in depth. Thank you so much for being with us. I understand that you battled COVID-19 yourself, Diana. Is that in fact what inspired you to start this grassroots movement? Yeah, so I was one of the first people to get a confirmed diagnosis of COVID back in early March of last year, when the tests were very, very hard to get and often unreliable. So with that confirmed case, I was in isolation for 18 days and I had a lot of time to think. And at that point, we really thought that you either survived or you died. And we had no idea that there would be such thing as long-term COVID at that point. But I realized that while I was in isolation, I became obsessed with the idea of convalescent plasma and the idea that I could emerge from this virus as a survivor with this sort of internally built hazmat suit that I could share with others by donating my plasma. And I realized also that there were so many mysteries of this virus that were only going to be unlocked hmm. by studying people like me, um, our blood, our experiences. And so I started Survivor Corps on March 24th of last year with the mission of mobilizing an army of survivors to donate their plasma and support science in every way possible. It wasn't until about a month later that we started to really realize that people were not recovering. And so obviously, you know, we, we've we been set out to work with the scientific and medical community from the beginning to help others, but we ended up having to also help ourselves. Here we are a year later. Do you have any lingering symptoms yourself? I'm very, very lucky. Um, I still have some headaches. I still have some deep inner ear pain. I was diagnosed with COVID onset glaucoma over the summer, and I was hospitalized about a month and a half ago with a mysterious abscess in my jaw muscle um, that does not look bacterial, and many of the doctor, the most of the doctors assume is COVID related, hmm. but until it's biopsied, it's yet another one of these medical wow. mysteries. That said, I am a better spokesperson for this group than I am an example, right. because most people in our group who are suffering are really suffering. Um, we're talking about people in their 20s and 30s who were college athletes and uh, personal fitness trainers and really at the height of their lives and health, who after a mild case of COVID, months later are in wheelchairs and My on goodness. feeding tubes and wearing heart monitors all day. I mean, 
Um, the damage that we're seeing is quite serious. It's really devastating. I, I don't want anyone to chalk it up to a post-viral fatigue. Okay. It is much more serious than that. Absolutely. But you, you talk about the story that you really want to get out there, and that is of monoclonal antibodies. What are yes. those, and how significant <laughs> are they? So monoclonal antibodies, it sounds very complicated. Um, let's call it the Trump treatment. This is the same monoclonal antibody cocktail that everyone was talking about that was given to President Trump and to Governor Christie and to Rudy Giuliani and likely saved all of their lives. And it was miraculous and it is now available and it is free if you qualify. And by qualify, that means anyone over the age of 65 and anyone from the age of 12 up who has a high BMI or any other pre-existing conditions. And the incredible thing is that, you know, this is not just for the rich and famous. This is available to every American. And while these vaccines are incredible and, you know, but not everybody has had an opportunity yet to be vaccinated and people are still getting infected with COVID every day. And the miracle of this of these monoclonal antibodies is that if you are given them early enough, and so when I say that really within three days of diagnosis, if possible, although you can get them for 10 days um, after diagnosis, you want to take them while you're still feeling good so that you stay feeling good. Um, by the time you get to the emergency room, it's too late. You can't receive them anymore. And not only will it likely save your life, but it will also probably keep you from developing long-term COVID, we believe. And you've um, created a portal on your website. Correct. It is called gotcovid.org, like got milk, gotcovid.org. Super easy to remember. Go and have a plan in place for you and those and everyone you know. And bottom line here for people who are watching and maybe suffering from some of these uh, symptoms months later after, quote, recovering from COVID-19, what's your message to them? What you are experiencing is absolutely real. Um, COVID devastates the body. Um, we originally thought that it was simply a respiratory disease, and we quickly understood it to be then also a vascular disease and an inflammatory disease. I believe we will also look back on it as um, also a neurological disease. And so what happens when there is disruption to your vascular system is that you can end up with blood clots in literally every single organ in your body. There is not a single organ that can't be compromised by COVID. And you know, just because you, you know, your spouse, you and your spouse might have gotten COVID at the same time and they bounced back and you haven't, and it doesn't seem to have any relevance to the severity of your initial illness. We found that the, um, the greatest predictor in terms of symptoms of what would bring on long-term COVID was being asymptomatic. Wow. Okay. And, and tell everybody the website for Survivor Corps before we say goodbye to you. Uh, Absolutely. It's SurvivorCore.com, C-O-R-P-S. Please fact, join us. Yes, please. And uh, the fact that COVID-19 is a, asymptomatic, that's what makes it such the mystery that it, that it is. So uh, Diana Barrett th with SurvivorCore, SurvivorCore.com. You see that website right there on your screen. Thank you so much for educating us today. Thank you so much for having me on. And be well. All right, coming up next on Fox 11 News In Depth, there is help on the horizon for those facing a financial crunch during the pandemic. We will tell you how to get it coming up after this. Welcome back. Businesses may be opening up around the U.S. and some people are going back to work, but there will be a long struggle for many to get back on their feet. Those long awaited stimulus payments are now starting to arrive, at least for some people. Others wonder if and when they'll get theirs. And the latest $1.9 trillion stimulus package has a number of other benefits in it. So let's talk about that. Joining us to do that, help us with that. Uh, what's in this package, how it might help you is Attorney Ugo Lord, welcome very much. Thank, Thank you, so you so much, much for, for being with me. us. So let's get straight to it. What are the eligibility requirements in this $1.9 trillion package? 
The great news is that if you are making less than $80,000 as a single individual or $120,000 as head of household, or if you're married less than $160,000 a year, you qualify for this next round of stimulus funds. Okay, but I know that a lot of these checks already went out and there is a way to track and people want to track. Where's my check? So how can pe folks do that out there? The most important thing after you determine that you're eligible is to track it by going to the irs.gov website and searching the Get My Payment tool. There you'll be able to see if the check was already sent out, whether it's by direct deposit, a debit card, or a check in the mail, and if it was sent to the right account. The most important thing that you can do is to stay on top of your stimulus package to enable you to maximize your benefits. All right, is there anything you can do if you haven't gotten benefits for the past stimulus packages? You're nodding your head. That means yes, there is something. What can we do? Absolutely. The recovery rebate credit is available to all 8 million people who have not received their first or second stimulus package but are still eligible. In order to do so, you must file your 2020 taxes and request the recovery rebate credit. If for some reason the IRS responds by saying that they've already initiated a payment for all three stimulus checks, then you can do what's called a payment trace with the IRS. And that is how the IRS zeroes into you specifically, tracks your payment and expedites it directly to you. And I know a lot of people have had to deal with job loss over this last year. So does this package have extensions for unemployment as well? Here's the great news to those that are struggling to find employment. The unemployment assistance has been extended to September 6th. And here in California, that means up to September 4th, you will receive an additional $300 each week in unemployment benefits that are going on right now. The California EDD has been very synchronous and allowing us to have a, not a secession in payments. It's been very seamless and individuals are being able to be protected right away. Okay, and then here we are, it's, uh, April. We are in tax month. The deadline for federal taxes has been extended to May 17th, but correct me if I'm wrong, that doesn't apply for, for state taxes, correct? That is correct. So the very good thing to know is just stay on top of it. If you need to file an extension, either you or your tax preparer can file that extension right away. The most important thing to know, especially for those that are struggling during the pandemic, is that with this latest stimulus package, there are additional benefits to filing your taxes now. That is, there is now a $10,200 credit that you will receive that is income that you'll be able to qualify tax free. That is, if you are unemployed, filed for unemployment, that first $10,200 is received tax free. So go ahead and file those taxes in order to maximize, or if you're not ready, file an extension. Okay, what about paying taxes on these stimulus payments? That is the really good news. Our government has done a great job in understanding that families are in fact hurting. So if you are receiving any type of stimulus benefit, you can receive that as an advanced upfront right now. You will still have to calculate your total income for 2020, and you'll still be taxed on your total income. But in terms of benefits received by the stimulus package, you do not have to worry about paying taxes on that right this instant. Focus instead on that relief and then sort out with your tax preparer how you'll be able to calculate that with your total income at the end of the year. You're an encyclopedia of knowledge. I love it. I'm going to keep the questions coming. I'm not done with you yet, Ugo. Now, one of the biggest happy to be here. <laughs> the, one of the biggest benefits uh, it has to do with the child tax credits. So, how does that work? This is huge, Marla. This is absolutely huge. Why? Because now, for the very first time, the, the child tax credit will allow you to receive an advance. If you have children that are 17 and younger, you're eligible for $3,000 a year for any child that is six and over, or up to $3,600 a year for any child five and younger. And in between July and December, 
it will come to you in the form of an advanced payment, similar to a stimulus payment that you could receive either monthly or quarterly. The details are still being worked out, but what is clear is that a check is coming, finally. Let's talk about tax deductions because we heard uh, earlier in the week about being able to uh, write off PPE, personal protective equipment like masks, etc. What can you tell us about that? Not only is this great for business owners, it is also great for individuals, sole, surpri sole proprietors, and independent contractors. You can deduct any equipment or any type of masks that you purchase in order to protect yourself, to protect your employees, or even to protect your family. You can deduct that from your annual taxes and allow that to be an extra cushion that you and your family can use to protect yourselves without breaking the bank at the same time. But there is a caveat, and that's 7.5% of your gross income, correct? But this also does include, if I'm not mistaken, all medical expenses. Yes, absolutely. And you can even work with your insurance providers to receive annual reports of all of your insurance expenses. You can tabulate that with your total annual income in order to calculate how much of it you'll be able to reduce. It is especially beneficial for those that are low to middle income because they will be able to deduct a great portion of it for their annual taxes. So always work with your local tax preparer and in this case, even your insurance company to get that tallied information in order to use that for your family's benefit. Ugo Lord, you make talking about tax deductions fun and everything else. So thank you so much for joining us on this Fox 11 News In Depth. Thank you so much for having me and stay safe. You too. He's great. All right, coming up on the Fox 11 News In Depth, the pandemic is even affecting the housing market with thousands of people now working from home. What's happened to real estate? We take a look right after this. In the news recently was a story of a moderately priced home in California. It went on the market not long ago and immediately generated more than 100 offers in its first weekend, including one more than $100,000 over asking. The past few months have seen a massive surge in home sales coupled with very few on the market. Here to sort all of this out for us is Eric Bildman. He is the vice president of the real estate investment firm called Sunday, like the kind that you eat. Welcome, Eric. Why Sunday? Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. Um, Sunday. Who, who doesn't love a Sunday? That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, we'll start off. Uh, that'll be our jumping off point from there. So uh, is this a buyer's or a seller's market? Right now is really a seller's market. If you look at uh, LA County specifically, inventory is down 17% year over year. And if you look down at San Diego or even out in Riverside, it's down even more at 50% year over year. Um, and there's still a ton of demand. Uh, and as a result, prices are up. 10% year over year, and we're predicting another 8 to 10% uh, home price appreciation for 2021. Why, why is inventory so low? I, I think it's a combination of a, of a bunch of things. I mean, home builders haven't been able to keep up with the rising demand. Um, there's also a contingent of would-be sellers that were wary of listing their homes during the pandemic. Um, so between the two of those uh, and just a ton of demand from people looking to update uh, and upgrade their living situations as a result of COVID. Um, supply is, is, again, at all-time lows. And, and what about the fact that so many more people are working from home these days? How does that impact? How do you think it will impact the future of the real estate market? Yeah, people are looking to uh, upgrade their living situations to accommodate work from home. And, and you know, over the past year, kids uh, uh, schooling from home as well. So um, you know, everyone is really looking to upgrade their, their living situation. And as a result, they're going out. A lot of former renters or people living in the densely populated cities are, are moving out looking for homes. Okay, well, as rents, uh, for the renters out there, rents are going up. So, so are the home prices. I mean, is this a good time to buy? <clears throat> the one thing I'll say about buying now, interest rates are still historically low. So 
on that front, it is a good time to buy. And um, while we're <clears throat> while rates have been climbing the last three months and will likely continue to climb through the rest of this year, they are still historically low. And with prices going up, if you can afford to buy a home, yes, I would buy a home if it makes sense for you personally right now. And what is what about all this talk about the you know the mass exodus out of California? Is that really what you're seeing? I think that's a little a little uh, exaggerated, to be honest. I think we've all heard of friends, neighbors, or friends of friends who have uh, moved out of LA. But the truth is, um, for online searches of residents of LA, over 82% of them are looking within LA County. Only 18% of them are looking to move. So, um, and as a result, there's more than enough uh, demand for the lack of supply in LA. And this is sort of getting back to the work from home scenario because it really doesn't matter where you live anymore. I mean, people are moving to where they can get more bang for their buck, where they can, A, number one, afford a home, but then also get more space. So where are those hot spots that you're seeing? Yeah, for people from California, within California, we've seen a huge influx of people moving from L.A. and San, uh, San Francisco down to San Diego. Um, outside of L.A., uh, some of the neighboring states that are seeing a, a big influx of, of, uh, of people are uh, Nevada and Las Vegas and Phoenix. So those are the two big ones. Well, off of the top here of your segment, we talked about that home that got, uh, you know, 100 offers in its first weekend and $100,000 over its asking price. That was in Citrus Heights, which is a suburb, for those who don't know, uh, of Sacramento, correct? Yes, exactly. Sacramento, of all the markets that we operate in right now on the West Coast, I would say Sacramento is the hottest right now. Every property that we put on the market in Sacramento is receiving multiple offers and, and getting bid way past uh, list prices. All right. Eric Bildman, the vice president of the real estate investment firm Sunday. Thank you for being with us and you earned yourself a Sunday. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I want one too. Cherry on top. Uh, thank you. We'll be right back with more Fox 11 News in depth right after this. Stay with us. Before we go, we want to give you an update on our host, Hal Eisner and Joab Perez. As you may remember, they were struck by a suspected drunk driver while working on assignment a couple of weeks ago. Joab suffered broken bones and he has been undergoing physical therapy. Hal has a fractured knee. He has been getting therapy for that as well and for three fractured ribs. They both send their thanks to everyone who has sent them good wishes or reached out to them on social media. Of course, we hope to see them back here with our Fox 11 family very soon. For Hal Eisner, I'm Marla Tejas. Thank you so much for being with us. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We'll see you next week.